they've got enough crowd control to set up for a second marksman. Yeah, and Ignar's going with Blitz again. Nice. Because why not, right? Why go with this? It. At least for the first six and a half minutes, has been business as usual for FlyQuest through the game. Still yeah, C9 uh, gets Zen it. shows up with the 4 before, and this time around solo. Oh, that is a hook, and that is burst damage. The ult comes down for Blabber in time, jumps from the wall. He's going to stay in the ring for some healing, and that's going to be up to keep him alive. Here comes the Orin Horn. Spike's going to go through the Cloud9. They oh. claim that, but Ignar's going to walk up for a kill. Can't find it. Cloud9 by the slip. To, to where C9 uses his Rift Herald. If they can get a kill onto the Flash, the solo, wow. it could be first turret. Flash used for it. Solo's going to run around as fast as he can, but he's now on the wrong side of the map. Not possible to live. Blabber's got the mark. They're going to find the kill, and Cloud9 finally wants to go for the play as fast as he can. Here comes the play. Here comes the dive. Two on two. Flash from Blabber. They're focusing him down. It's a lot of first. A quick stun for Licorice, and they're going to burn down Santorin. Blabber was still unable to ult, but a one for oh. one is now going to hold on to that button, right? Knows he's yep. flashless, knows he has to hold on to that jump just in case something happens. Gets the smite, jumps over the wall. Clean take. Since 2014, and maybe there's a little bit of hesitancy with the way they're going. They got to find their footing in this game, and that's a big thing. <clears throat> Oh, goodbye. That is Flashless Ignar. He burned it to chase down Vulcan and didn't convince the kill to come over. Now it flashed to the bottom side. So much crowd control. Licker's going to come with the punch back, but he's still running low on health and just simply is not going to get away. But he will set up for his mid laner. Niski gets on the board with his first kill of the game. Now that they've pushed PoE off of the top lane, it appears that Blabber can go and take the Rift Herald. Rift, so they might look to pressure with Rift Herald for something, but they find Turtle. That is so much damage. The anchor into the ultimate. Nothing could have been done unless he flashed the Q, and that is optimal timing. Cloud9 is going to get that kill. They'll get the wave. The blitz question mark emo comes out. Who is the better hook champion now? You can see the disappointment on FlyQuest faces right now after Wild Turtle getting picked off. This is a questionable fight with no way to carry, but they're going anyway. Miss the hook. They saw. They saw Niski was bot lane. They're going to go back here for this one. Vulcan gets the aftershock on, goes in towards Sully. He's going to run back. Big burn. Gonna get him down, and they will. They will knock down Blabber. The trade back to Centauri. It's jungler for jungler. Now Vulcan's getting low. One more auto kill, but he gets out of range. Disky on the way back up the lane. Same for Wild Turtle. Again, it's a one for one. A trade of jungle kills. Disky is now here, and he's the guy with the big health bar. Finds a stun on Soul, but it's not. Cost to FlyQuest is relatively low. POE now. Wild Turtle has to really watch out, and FlyQuest jumped the gun. They're going earlier. They can get Sven. Going for the play, and they've knocked down one already. Here comes the re-engage, and it's a 4v4 because PoE cannot join the fight. So Ignar is dead, and into the back line goes Licorice. The chase down's going to look good. You got to run. Flash. Licorice does the same. There is a slow on Solo, and he can try to get away. The health bar is big, but he's not nimble enough. Cloud9 lose the AD carry. But then they had nothing left and C9 could chase them down with what was still a numbers advantage. Damage trade as Volk goes in a half HP. Well done by Wild Turtle. Puts down another turret. That's more things. Here comes the hook. Here comes the play already. The duck, the backline. Power of Evil is not going to got his ear. One for one so far. And Santorin's in a bad spot. He's going to try to flash away. Stays alive. Power of Evil was the richest person in the game. 260 CS and two kills. Being able to kill him at the start of the fight means C9... Yes, God. they have. Nine to six in kills. Those fights have gone better. The hook's not going to land. The stun certainly will. Will we knock down Vulcan? Not just yet. Finds a backline stun. Damage on Santorin. Gets taken wow. down. And Blabber's still on the chase. Gets pushed back. Oh, barely gets back on the ultimate. Here comes Vent Horizon. Here comes Woo. the re-engage. Huge damage from PoE, but it's not going to be enough. Turtle is going to get punched to death. And Sven is free firing as well. FlyQuest can try to find the kill on the Blabber. Not only do you have to beat them in draft or in strategy, you also have to be able to out punch them in team fights. And right there, you're going to back up because that would be FlyQuest's window to re engage. So you can see Cage goes up. C9 backs off, they get a few shots in, and now C9 will he reset. Backs up, C9 walks in, you mentioned the cage, that comes down, no re-engage possible. There's turret number one, there's pushed in bot lane, they find a stun, that is big damage. The ult, he's not, I think he was slightly out of range, maybe, yeah. but either way, it might not have been enough damage. He's forced to burn his flash, they got a flash follow this one, they they're really, hustle. really trying for this kill. Ignar needs to land the hook, it's the ult need to get the dunk oh, back in. There's the punch, it oh, man. Time and bullet time, drops him low. Licorice will still fall, is this a fight that Cloud9 wants? They find a knock up on the Just to get that spot, and they have no vision. This is going to be an uphill battle for FlyQuest. Vulcan front lines. He'll pop Stoneplate when he can. He's dropped so dangerously low, and Kidadol comes down as well. 
See, we make the big play, and it's two kills picked up. That's huge for FlyQuest. How about the re-engage? They've already picked up one. It's now back to a 4v3 in Cloud9. Oh, looking to go forward. Sven flashes away, trades his life. Niski's in the middle of three. That's going to be him dropping. FlyQuest may have the turned the corner, but Niski what? found a kill on Turtle the last second. What? He got a spell off. I think his W fell on top of Turtle. He didn't see it, and that suddenly means so much. Oh. Now it's only two on one instead of three. Oh, I'm just going to start up the drink and force FlyQuest to come in. They don't have Oral yet. Dragon fight to Electric Boogaloo, go for the battle right away, but if Felix is nowhere nearby, the smite is easy, and here comes the engage. This looks Cloud9 favored, and it certainly is. Quick be able to pick up the Ocean Soul, having Santorin dead, no steal to be had unless Turtle <laughs> get a, nope. got a miracle Turtle steal with both, and it took a 70% health of Felios to zero. That, to me, is the defining moment in this win where FlyQuest nearly turned it around and could have had control, whereas now C9 has total control of this game. We do know Aphelios and Azir still have incredible damage that has the potential to move through the Ocean Soul. It is just that much more unlikely at this point. Unlikely is the name of the game right now. Cloud9 likely to push through, but for now, they're going to play a little bit patient. Shove in top, go back to mid. This turret nearly going down. Baron buff still on for about a minute and change as they're going to shepherd in the wave. The cannon menu will do a little bit of chip damage and one auto attack will knock it down from Sven. So here comes the engage. Done. Done onto two. Goodbye to Ignar. Solo is tanky, but he still has to outrun Cloud9 and that will not happen. Oh. The dunk is 80% of PUE's health and Sven does the rest. In for the dive, his blabber pops the ulti. Here come the emotes just for good measure. Couldn't catch what they are, but it doesn't matter. The Nexus will fall. FlyQuest made him work for it, but Cloud9 are the better team. They take game one of the LCS final. There's a lot to unpack in just this so game one. This is a physical damage heavy team. You are often not gonna see an arm guard out of the Syndra, although you may. It's not that easy to build armor on Back a Back into PoE's Azir. So that's the top lane, and then down bottom lane, the thing Getting are... to walk down to lane, shoving the wave, then fully refilling your health and mana once you're like six minutes yeah. in and those things spawn. You feel like you have so much control. Nice punch right there. Ult's gonna come through okay. though for Licorice to deal some damage back as here comes Blaver, but also here comes Santorin. And this might be Licorice running low on health, gonna land the first half. Blaver gets the crowd control in time to save Licorice's flash. We'd have had to dodge that one. Santorin goes in for <gasps> one, but Licorice gotta be careful. The health bar's low, the ult's gonna both. come in. Doesn't even need it. Now it goes for Blaver. That's going to be kill number two picked up off the ulti as well. Pia, we going to take some damage. Niski answers one back, and he's going to flash for more. Finds the next knockup. Finds the chase down on Solo, who does not have escape tools. Will they have the damage with play? Yes, they will. Niski finds a double. Off of the race is now item-wise. I will point out that Power Beevil does have some more defensive tools. Nice flash follow, but Sven is already fairly safe back there. Ignar's flash really accomplishes nothing. Yeah. Sad to say. And now Wild Turtle slowed, still flashless. Not a chance to get away. Burns the heal, but he's still not going to live through it. And Ignar, when is play back up? Can they pull him in? There's the Oslo ult. There's a ton of damage. And we're just taking double kill for double kill for double kill. Zen on the board for two. Ignar looks a little tilted. Uh, it looked nice as a flash follow, but that play was never going to work, and it turns to disaster. Now they're going for more. Blabber's here for the counter gank. 2v1 top side, make it 2v2 already. Blabber knocks back Centaur. Mm. The turret shuts the health bar. And then when that failed, Flyquist said, all right, we need to make something happen top lane. And oh boy, Ignar doesn't make it over the wall. He's flashless. There's the flay. Goodbye. Who's turn? It's Zen. While they are taking Infernal 2, and they have a 2-0 mid laner who is equal CS to a Syndra, which has been banned uh, against FlyQuest an absurd amount. So this freak is what Cloud9 was yeah. doing to the LCS all year. This is their yes. record setting early game. And this is why on pace to be the highest win percentage team in all of LCS history. And they're on pace for it. This is looking incredible in this game too right now. The Herald Charge comes in just for extra measure to bot lane tier two, that'll fall. And we'll have the wave caught up by Wild Turtle. But a lot of credit to Cloud9 roaming around the map, finding the plays. I mean, the fact that Niski has roamed. He's gonna spawn shortly, so Zven by no means had to rush. And it's it's time to move mid now. So notice how FlyQuest is catching that top lane turret. He does the rest of what they need. Takes a total of five. 
There we go, knocks it down, turret gone. If they want to, otherwise they should be pressing a side wave to at least accrue gold. Drake goes over, and here comes C9. Is something FlyQuest should probably look to punish. 3v1, nice knockback. He has a knockup himself, Bill misses that one here. This is gonna be a pretty easy dive. There's a knockup. Windwall buys some time, Redemption does as well. And here come the reinforcements, still a one for zero. But the re-engage is in. Power of Evil is gone, and Ignar is likely to be next. Vulcan flashes for the play. Centaurin's gonna fall. Two kills picked up. That's the fourth player to do so in this game. Give him the triple. Licorice shows up in a big way. And try and do something against this Cloud9 team. They're able to turn it around. Niski bought the perfect amount of time with his wind wall, and the rest of C9 could just collapse down onto it. 21 minute Baron, five and a half thousand gold lead, full control for C9. And Blabber walks in for a slow wild turtle. What? He's gonna catch himself a stopwatch. And can he catch the rest? Oh, no. Flash for Blabber. Extra regen in combat gonna mean a lot, especially when your opponents have low damage output overall. Vulcan tries for the hook. He's gonna find a play. Knocked up though. Solo wants to take the fight. There's the dunk in for Licorice. Gets some damage, but not a whole lot else. That's a big hit. And Turtle's already got a three for zero instantly. Cloud9 turn it right back around. There is no chance for FlyQuest to win this fight. You're seeing some smiles in the FlyQuest faces. They know how yeah. much better Cloud9 have been in this series. 14 to 4 in kills, pushing down the mid lane. I mean, for a second, Freak, I thought maybe they would have denied the Ocean Soul by having the game in. But it looks like <laughs> is deciding to just have Licorice go down, solo the Ocean Soul. They're taking the full roundabout of turrets in this one because the death timers are so short. C9 can't actually end the game. But this gold graph is so up and to the right in terms of control of this game. Yeah, at this point, C9 doesn't need to take a risky fight. Member of TSM before they got Weaver swept. So, still, lots of league to be played, but things are looking pretty good right now for C9. Flash knockup, decent damage, stopwatch burn, 4v1, but is it really the reinforcements come in? And Niski puts up the wind wall, but cannot survive. That's kills picked up now, but here comes the reactions. Zen is now dominating power of evil. Doesn't have a lot of places to go. The G2 swag comes in for Sven for good measure and finds himself a double kill. That's one of his championship teams, his only championship team before. There's a triple to add to it as the Misfits logo for good measure goes back to G2. <laughs> With Ocean Soul picking up their second bit. Yep. And more importantly, Sven is just jamming that. He was going out of the adventure right there. Seems like he's, he's fine. He blew Spider and walked away, but Solo is going to be in a little bit of danger. That dunk does a bunch of damage. Turtle flashes out to safety, but Solo's at half already. Look at the cast. It nearly kills him already, and it's actually a kill picked up. Hey, well done to Flyquist to get one on the board. A knockup onto Licorice, but Solo cannot get away. The flash does nothing. That's the fourth kill in a row now for Licorice up in that top lane. Yeah, a little surprising. Blabber died with his Zonia's Hourglass still available. Looked like a bit of a CC lock. He was hoping to get the heal from Redemption uh, and died just beforehand. Still, though, there ain't stopping Zven at this point. 906 Callista with Baron buff and C9 looking to open up two, maybe three inhibitors. And looking to close the game out in about 30 minutes here as the middle inhibitor Tro is going to drop. The bot inhibitor itself is already gone and there's no defense for mid lane. Now, we'll point out that the respawn slightly favor FlyQuest and that Blabber the is There is the darkness. There is now FlyQuest not knowing what's going on this side of the map. There's the hook into the front line. There's the box. They play back solo. And here comes the engage yet again. Stop watching. It's burning out of Blabber. Nitsky's already in the back line. Fights Santorin, who jumps away and stays alive. But Blabber finds out the first kill. The second one goes over to his top laner. And that wind ball was perfect. It blocks everything from PoE. A double kill for the jungler. Double kill for the top laner. There's the kills coming through fast and furious. The bar light ace for Cloud. Nine. They will not go for the dragon. They will go for the Nexus. A 30-minute win is almost slow for their taste, but it was dominant the whole way through. Cloud9 going to have a 2-0 lead in the finals on their way to be the best team to ever defeat North America. This is a slaughter as the Nexus falls. Niski proves he is not a KDA player. Flying into the Nexus right at the end as C9 make it. I mean, the fact that Syndra has been so dominant, the Rumble is the thing that you match it with. I'll get into this specifically how uh, it wasn't realistically easily ganked and uh, able to play it out pretty well. Licorice and Solo battling. Suddenly, three members top lane. The flash stun. Licorice burns his own flash, but he will go down. Three Gone for Drake control. This bot lane is going the way it has kind of all series long, which is that Sven and Vulcan 
by far the best bot lane in the Olympic league. Conditions here for FlyQuest, number two all pro support, right? And it's not from his landing, it's from his roaming, it's from his mid game plays. Right now that he's being pushed out of the lane, he's been unable to win the lane itself, of course. One plate already gone bot side, and now 4v1 turtle is equalized. He's taking turret shots, he brings up summoner heal. There's the knockup, there's Ignar showing. Turtle's gonna flash the exhaust on him. That kill's gonna come through, finds the root, but a bit more gold and XP towards him. Nice little stun. Here comes the Ornhorn. Perfect timing. Niski does have flash, but can't get away from the knockup. Ooh. Here's the rest of the chase, but they can't get the rest. And PoE has dropped to 100 health for Wild Turtle. He also has the Nimbus Cloak on Rumble, so when he uses summoner spells, he gets that little extra bit of move speed. And we might see a Rift Herald fight right here. Nice flash. Another oh flash dear. play. Ulti is traded back and forth. Kiwi able to get away. Equalizer early. And Niski is running out of health. Santorin's on the board for one. Blabber having a hard time against Kiwi, but that Syndra's on the wrong side. Flash up broken, not gonna land. Next knockup, neither. Oh. Kiwi goes to the play, but it's gonna be turned back around. And Vulcan's on the lead. Board. This is nearly enough for the charge to kill it wholesale. They're gonna put some more damage in. As long as Vulcan stays at that distance, he won't steal any gold. Walks in for the rest of it though, and he will share. Instead of that first turn, a bit of fire, and it's maybe a single plate kill as Pantheon shows up. Santorin finds the stun. Oh, man. Big damage on Niski, but now they gotta run away again. Here comes the teleport. Suddenly, the rest of the squad is there. Equalizer is decent damage, but not a ton. Santorin, though, has to be afraid of this one. Ignar shows up, and they have the damage to kill off Niski. The tower dive works long term. Licorice, Vulcan, and the rest of the crew is here. Blabber's gonna try, but maybe not very well. There's the knockup in. There's the kill coming through. Licorice trades back on a Santorin but it's a two for one team fight in the favor of FlyQuest. And it might not be done. Vulcan is looking because Ven is coming through River. This would be a 3v3. Well, it goes for the ulti. That's not gonna land. Turtle was actually catching up on CS a little bit down in the bottom side, a game he was completely out of. Turtle actually picks up two waves and a Solo also on the play. Niski is going to be knocked up. Does have heal, does have flash, but here comes the squad. Stun lands it. Ulti in for Blabber. No easy answer just yet. A Centaurin puts the shield up. Solo. The player base start now. Oh, they just snuck into River <laughs> to, to get front door on the dragon. They've swapped who's controlling mid and who has River control. Oh, but they found CC onto Blabber and shut him down instantly. Here comes the dive. FlyQuest need this fight, and they may have just found it. Vulcan's pushed out. Niski saved the back line. Equalizer over the top is a lot of work. Solo drops low. There's the first kill. It's a one for one so far. Ooh. Flashes to safety, but I've seen this before. Aatrox in the bot river finds a double. Kill. Destroyed before it even happened, and a lot of teams... Running that as a win condition. It's... A pretty good Drake for C9 to have. Honestly, almost all the Drakes are pretty good. 21 minute Baron uncontested. And we might have the Red Bull power play. Right beat. now, with the chance to finish the split at 26 and two, which would be better than any of those. Two is gonna be a formality. 5,000 gold lead will grow by about 10% as that one falls. 15 seconds and for the most part I think they're just trying to accrue gold you can even see a little bit of defensive itemization coming in from Sven guarding against a loss okay, and here goes FlyQuest the attempt towards Blabber ult goes over the top and dives right back out and Santorin Yo. cannot <laughs> escape the fire and fury of the Cloud9 team fight that's gonna be a rough one for FlyQuest not unlocks the push FlyQuest not going to be able to fight 4v5, especially with Ignar's ulti down, but they're going to try with Solo getting a knockup, but already stopped and hooked back in and played back in and killed and sent back to the fountain. Cloud9 are now 5v3 on the map, and the power play continues as they knock down the inhibitor turret. The inhibitor going to drop as well. Still 35 seconds left on this, as well as the wait till this comes up. Power of Evil's got to be respectable. Hook almost predicted correctly. And this might be the Cloud9 reset. They're gonna kite backwards. They find, they find the root and the flash over for the double chase down. Blabber gets himself a double. And it's five versus two. They're ready to keep going. The players keep going up, and C9 are going for the Nexus turrets. The respawn still 10 seconds away. They will find that first Nexus turret and they will push right minions. Second, but they are out of minions. They're not gonna claim this one just Dimension. yet. The Egan difference, the Mountain Soul. Everything. A bit more than maybe was predicted, and you know, catches the the engage that allows him to get more of it. Sven gets the lantern, gets the mid lane. Very soon in Sven's inventory, that'll be very, very high DPS actualization for him on the okay, Ophelia. The flash play going for the kill instead. Centaurin 
Forced to flash out to safety, and he will stay alive. But Vulcan still wants in. Just walks up for the hook. He's going to catch that one. Solo finds the knockout. Oh, comes in. comes the fight, and they have shut down Sven. That is a huge pickup, but is it going to be enough? Licorice fighting back in the back line. Sandron's going to drop as well. And can you kill anyone else on Cloud9? It's two answered kills. Stop watch burn for Ignar. Play's going to let him just barely walk away, but Turtle is going to fall as Licorice continues to chase. It's a three for one team fight, and it might be a fourth. Licorice is still trying to find a bit more into Ignar. He's going to stab him in the back. And a four for one team fight. They don't need the Baron. They need to push down the base. They just needed one team fight, and they got it. Solo is the only thing standing in the way of Cloud9 lifting the trophy, and it's not going to be enough. He's trying to stall as He's much as try. possible. He's got respawns in 10 seconds. It's a tanky man. Redemption helps build the time, though. And that is Niski on a rampage. Santorin's back alive. But the Nexus turrets are going to fall. Santorin goes for minions. Then back to the engage. The bot lane's al alive in five seconds. But they will not stop it. Cloud9 waited six years. And they will hoist the trophy again. For all five players, the first time in their careers, the Nexus falls. Licorice deals the killing blow. And Cloud9 with the 20. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to us because I'm so excited to bring you the first words from one of our champions. I've got Sven here. And first things first, from Niels back in the day to Sven now, you have become the first player in the world to ever win a title in both the European and North American Pro Leagues. So here's your chance. Tell the world, what exactly does this mean to you? Uh, I mean, it means a lot. This is my, my first goal when I came here two and a half years ago was to do do this exactly win you know a title in both both regions so more than anything i feel like i just accomplished what i came here for uh, i guess so i feel like a, a sense of relief but also like i feel like a bit complete i guess in a way i feel like i i got what i came here for now and now it's just up from here only so i feel this so good <laughs> Hey, you can take a deep breath because, I mean, let's face it, it wasn't an easy journey from you. If we look less than a year ago, you faced a lot of heavy criticism after your time on TSM that you were determined to turn around. And you managed to do so in a matter of months between the off season and the beginning of the spring split. So what was it, whether it was driven from you directly, maybe a combination of that and the support around with Cloud9, that allowed you to make that quick turnaround to becoming one of the best ADCs in this entire region, if not the best? I think C9 is just really, really amazing. They helped me so much in the offseason by allowing me and Vulcan, the two new guys on the team, to boot camp in Korea in their their apartment, which is really great. And we were there for like over a month together, um, combined with the boot camp in January, right? So that helped me a lot to fix my offseason. Um, and Reaper already in that one boot camp told me like, I think this, this, and this is one problem you have. And you try to work on that in the offseason. I did. And I think just C9 has the winning recipe for how we do our things, you know, from our, our morning workout to our book club to our scrim system. I think everyone does their job and, and more than that. And C9 knows what we need, not what we want. And it's just so great to be in this team. I think everyone knows exactly what to do to succeed. And on top of that, I think everyone put more effort than anyone else in their roles and their league. So I, I just feel super great in this team. Oh, from the words, I'm sorry, to the words, we're a champion. So much has changed for you, and I'm so happy for you and the rest of the team. For now, we are going to send it back to the State Farm Analyst Desk and eventually get words from more champions here today. Thank you very much, Dash. I am here with Licorice. Licorice, congratulations on the win. Now, before we get into uh, the interview, the first thing that I want to ask you is tell me about that final moment when everyone's on the nexus and you were able to get the final hits off and then eventually the house erupts into applause the last play was kind of i don't know it, it wasn't that like crazy for me because in the fight before i was like a three item atrox i knew i think my call was that i'm invincible so when i'm on the nexus i was like okay yeah the game's over you know like they can't they can't kill me like they don't have enough damage so i kind of i kind of knew it was over before it actually was and yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's great to see everyone so excited. Tell me about, I saw everyone rushed in. It looked like Vincent, uh, one of the managers was coming in with popcorn or confetti. Uh, everyone was just up cheering. I know that it wasn't in a stadium, but in the house, it still felt like there was so much more excitement. 
Yeah, I mean, the after the game stuff isn't isn't like what you're trying to think about in game. So I'm glad that Vincent, he had like a popcorn bowl filled with like little pieces of paper that he was throwing around for confetti. That was great. Um, I mean, everyone has just been so supportive the whole time. Like we had Jack running in, like our entire coaching staff. And I don't know, it just felt really good. Now, this split, you said that you wanted Cloud9 to be the team that could beat anyone. And now after this amazing split, here you are, you've taken the finals and proved that Cloud9 is the best team in NA, as well as securing your first split title. So, I mean, what does it all mean to you? How does it feel to now be so dominant at the top? It feels good. I I don't know. I, I think that for me, I'm honestly a little disappointed that like everything went the way it did and we're playing remote and we like didn't have that big stadium moment and obviously it makes total sense why we're playing from home and I think like absolutely the right call but that's a bit disappointing and also like I really want to play internationally with my team because I think that we are really talented and we work really hard and I want to see how far we can go. Well, I know all of the fans have been cheering on you and Cloud9 from home. A lot of support there. But one other thing that I did want to point out, this is your first split title, but it's also Reapered as a coach's first split title with the team. So was there any extra meaning to uh, Cloud9 being able to take this win also for him? The Cloud9 win, I mean, I think it means like a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And for me, it was kind of, like it's like this amazing moment where I've been working so hard to be able to win a split and finally I was able to win this one and now I just want to win more honestly so <laughs> <laughs> like I, I think going into summer I just I, I want to win that too and I want to win on a stage and hopefully that'll be a thing that can happen but um I think that for everyone it's like their own unique experience like for the diehard fans that have been with Cloud9 since it was established and they've been waiting for a trophy for so long like this was such a big moment and Honestly, like I've been getting so much support and I'm so like happy to be on this team and to have the fans that we do. Well, Cloud9 is looking incredibly strong. Moving into summer split, what else can you guys improve on? I mean, maybe getting that 18 and 0 run? The 18 and 0 run would be cool. I'm not sure that that's actually what we're going to be focused on at all. I think that we are very good at the style that we play and that there's still so much to practice and learn because like we're not perfect players and I think that we're going to like keep working on ourselves and keep trying to get better and make sure that no one can catch us going into summer. That's an excellent mindset to have licorice. Once again, congratulations on the victory. Good luck with improvement towards summer. Maybe there is a player of the week statue in your future, but that's it for us here. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you so much, Dash. We are hearing from one final player from the new championship Cloud9 squad, and it is Niski. First things first, I want to hear from you as you've developed a reputation as a vocal leader, as well as somewhat of a class clown for your team. And we've heard about the meaning of this being the first title for everyone and how much of an important set is for Cloud9. But how did your role then have to change, considering you all knew you had championship potential, but there's still so much pressure going into this match? Um. I mean, to be honest, I think my team is really good compared to like the other teams. Like my, I don't know, my ball lane is always winning lane for some reason. Licorice is holding his own and then me and Blabber are just doing our things. But I feel like the most important thing that I, that we did today as a team, I think is just no one kind of got cocky. Like we all played at our best performance, I think. And that's why it was a 3-0. And I think that's something that shows me how we are as a group, we're like, we're dominating the whole split. And then even in the finals, we still dominate. And I think we can, it can still only go up from here, you know? So yeah, I'm just, I'm just really happy. While it's so wonderful how much honor you all give to your teammates in this situation, I want to talk a bit about your specific performance because even the casters were talking about how they can send four people to your lane and you are totally good on your own. You contributed so much of your improvement to watching other players like Duembe during the off season. But did you ever feel at some point during the split that you developed your own trend setting style as far as within the North American scene? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I think watching Duembe was like the first step, I guess. Um, like, I think I watched mm -hmm. a lot of other mids and then I watched like Rookie and then Chovy, you know, like just a lot of really great mids were like, what can I do that they do? And then just kind of trying to fit it in my play style, I guess. And then I started doing the timers, like Doin B, and then 
I kind of have my own temple and then like I can play majors, I can play melees, you know, like I can, I just wanted to be a really good player that you can draft around and like that the enemies are really scared of you, that they have to like either focus you or kind of give up on like some champions, you know. Um, so I don't know, I think for me it was just really important that this year I was good enough because I mean, after Last Worlds, I realized that like I wasn't even sure if I would stay on Cloud9 or not because I mean, my world's performance was really bad. So I had to make sure that I stepped it up and I felt like I gave, I mean, I gave them a trophy. So, you know, there's nothing else I can do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you remember, but it was actually one of our very first interviews earlier this year where you said that you were the best mid laner before the votes went in, before anything else happened. So I want to give a personal congratulations to you in achieving that feat. But also as a last Cloud9 player, we're getting to hear from directly today. This is a big moment for Cloud9 and for all of the fans that stuck with this organization since the 2014 championship title. So here's your opportunity to speak on behalf of your team to all the fans out there that have stuck with you all during this entire time. Um, I mean, I think it's really important that we still kind of get supported by the fans, I guess, because I know that during the offseason, all the fans kind of gave up on us or like they were really angry with what we did. But I think by winning the split, we really proved to everyone that we made the right decisions. And also, this is our first win, uh, our first trophy for all of us, um, I believe. And I think it can only go up from here. So uh, I'm looking forward to even winning the summer split already. So, yeah. Up, up, and away for Cloud9. With that 3-0, Cloud9 have clipped the wings of their competition of FlyQuest and proved that they're the only ones that deserve a spot in the sky. For more on this championship match, let's send it back to the State Farm Analyst Desk.